All right. Vulnerability is a concept, an emotion, a way of being and experiencing the world that I did not understand three, four years ago. Well, I guess most of my life, I didn't understand it. And I'm super grateful to have been able to dive into this concept of vulnerability and understand it at a deeper level. I'm Diane Lloyd. I'm the founder of Inspired Results Group. We help leaders create inspired teams who change the world. And I am really fortunate to have trained with Brene Brown, experienced Dare to Lead as a curriculum, I'm a certified facilitator, and so I've had the honor, really it's an honor to represent Brene's work and to benefit from her teachings personally and professionally and to be able to share that with so many of our clients. So this is kind of like a little Dare to Lead sneak peek. You know, what is, what is Dare to Lead all about? Well, vulnerability and understanding vulnerability is a huge part of it. So I'm playing with technology today. I'm practicing vulnerability <clears throat> and I'm recognizing that this moment feels a little bit risky. Uh, being in front of you, sharing slides, working with technology always feels vulnerable for me. And that's because vulnerability is about those emotions we experience in moments of uncertainty, risk, and emotional exposure, which I think of as sort of being seen. So, you know, small moments like this, going live, being seen, not really sure how things are going to unfold from a technology perspective, when, whether anybody will show up perspective, and just, just being seen in general feels vulnerable for me. So what I'd like to do is talk to you about vulnerability, define vulnerability, and then share with you three reasons why vulnerability is actually a leadership strength. Something I certainly didn't think of prior to 2019. It's something I am so aware of now. And so I'm really excited to share why vulnerability is a leadership strength. Why is navigating uncertainty, risk, and emotional exposure important? So if we're not being vulnerable, what's the opposite of vulnerability? Well, the opposite of vulnerability can be the concept of armoring up, another Brene Brown sort of language. So vulnerability is I'm showing up. That's me right now being vulnerable. I'm showing up, I'm present, and I'm leaning into the discomfort of being seen on LinkedIn Live. And I'm keeping the armor off. So armor, you know, Brene uses the metaphor of armor, and I wanna just bring that to life. What does that actually mean, armor, in the context of being a human being? being in relationship with others. Armor is, and if I physically put my hands up, armor is those moments when we self-protect. Armor metaphorically protects us. So when we armor up, we're choosing behaviors to self-protect. So in this little example of LinkedIn Live, I, pr I was probably armored up for years knowing that doing LinkedIn Lives and being seen would probably be a good idea for my business, but I armored up and hid from that because it felt uncomfortable and risky, AKA vulnerable. <laughs> um, I spoke to an audience a couple of weeks ago that is not my typical audience. Um, very much a command and control culture. So that felt incredibly vulnerable. I didn't know how that was gonna go. I had to show up, be present, be myself, lean into the discomfort and just go for it. And it would have been very easy for me to have declined that opportunity and just stayed hidden 
you know, stayed out of that environment because it felt very vulnerable. So vulnerability and armoring up, so vulnerability being seen, being yourself, leaning into the discomfort of that, leaning into the risk around that, that is vulnerability. When we armor up, we choose behaviors that self-protect. So I'm, I'm using armor, the hiding armor example. Armor might look like, uh, it could look like, you know, aggressive behavior, shutting things down. It could look like subtle behaviors, like taking control of things. That's another way my armor shows up when I get uncomfortable with uncertainty. I'll just want to control things, like take control, kind of bring it closer to me, make the decisions, and that creates comfort for me, but it pushes other people away. So armor can be very obvious, armor can be subtle, but I just want you to think about armor as any behavior you choose to self-protect, to keep you out of the discomfort of vulnerability. So we don't wanna armor up as leaders because it creates disconnection, it pushes people away. That is not great leadership. As a leader, we don't wanna push people away we want to create connection, we want to invite them in, and we want to work together. That's what leadership and leading a team is all about. So I'm going to walk you through three uh, stories, three examples of why bother with vulnerability as a leader, as a human being, as a team member. Really, these apply to any context, um, but I'm curious if they resonate for you. So why bother with vulnerability? I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna show you this formula and then I'm gonna back it up. Vulnerability is the gateway to building trust. And Brene talks about you know, trust and vulnerability as kind of a stacking relationship. It's like small steps, small increments, practice a little vulnerability, build a little trust. So it can be very, Stacking, I like to think of it as, actually, I actually like to think of it as more of an organic process. But vulnerability, when we are actually seen for who we are and take some risks, that creates connection between people. And I, I kind of see this everywhere now, but when I think about this from a leadership perspective, I was actually thinking about my time at the Pan Am Games, which I'll really date myself because this is in the 90s. I was early in my career, so I was in my late 20s, early 30s, and was part of the corporate sponsorship fundraising team for the Winnipeg 1999 Pan American Games. And that team, I just think back to that team and how much trust we had. We were, I think, about 12 people we had it was such a high pressure environment we had two years to raise 28 million dollars and a lot of us were were young to be honest i think most of us didn't really know what we were doing but we were in it we were committed we worked incredibly hard and we leaned on each other a lot and we had a lot of fun along the way and there were just some incredibly challenging moments that you know, I think we were all vulnerable in those moments of acknowledging I'm in over my head. I don't know what I'm doing. And we were able to talk about that with each other. We were able to acknowledge it. I know as the leader of the team, I was definitely open about that a lot of the time. I didn't know what vulnerability was then, but when I think back um, and how my colleagues connected to me, through vulnerability, it just created this trust glue. And with that trust glue, we could do anything and we did reach our goals. Um, we had an incredibly successful games and it was one of the most fulfilling and challenging experiences of my professional career. And I think so fondly of that team because of the trust that we had. So know that in those moments when you say, as a leader or a team member, <clears throat> I'm not sure what to do next, and you invite in some ideas. 
I don't know what to do next. I'm not sure what the right next step is. Those are moments of vulnerability. You being seen, you speaking your truth, you taking your armor off and, and stepping into that uncertainty and the emotion that will show up as you let your team members know, I'm not sure what to do next. I'm not sure what the right answer is. What do you think? That is a trust building move. Renee's research says that the number one trust building behavior at work is asking for help. So if you're an employee working with your team, working with a leader, just know that when you ask for help, when you say, I'm not clear, I don't know, can you help me? That is building trust with your leader. So it's a two-way street. Um, I have so many stories around this. Maybe we'll do another live on vulnerability and trust. Sometimes people think, oh, I have to have high, high trust before I'll be vulnerable with you. And obviously there's uh, all kinds of situations where trust and you assessing the safety of the situation in the, through the lens of trust. So I, I acknowledge that. And I also want to encourage you to practice a little bit of vulnerability, a little bit of being seen. That will actually build trust. If you wait for trust, if vulnerability is the gateway to trust, but you're waiting for trust, 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 I think you'll be waiting a long time. I encourage you to dance in this vulnerability piece a little bit. Okay, so the number one strength why leaders need to practice vulnerability is because it builds trust. Here's another reason why vulnerability is a leadership strength. If it's in the definition, vulnerability is about embracing uncertainty, risk, and emotional exposure. Taking risks is such an incredible, uh, uncomfortable experience. Uh, and risks don't have to be big, crazy capital R risks. They can be small risks. You know, again, LinkedIn lives feel risky for me. Um, I often think about um, Melody Reynolds from Elate Cosmetics, who is a friend, a client, and, and a Dare to Lead advocate. She took her whole team through Dare to Lead. And what I learned through that experience with Melody and her team is how much Melody embraces vulnerability as a leadership strength and her willingness to take risks. Melody's disrupting the cosmetics industry. She's creating a clean beauty company that's like zero waste, um, clean products. She's disrupting an industry that's known for using harmful ingredients in their products and creates a lot of waste. So she's disrupting an industry which requires huge risk. And she is always her authentic self in every interaction that I have with her and in the way that she leads with her team. Now, this is, I'm gonna go on a little tangent here, which isn't a melody tangent, it's a vulnerability tangent. Sometimes people think that vulnerability is about being emotional, being overly emotional, perhaps. In one of Brene's videos in Dare to Lead, she says that um, a leader, leaders would come up to her and ask, like, how often do I need to cry at work? How much vulnerability, how much crying needs to happen in order to be seen as a, a daring leader? And she, she does the whole cringe, like, oh my gosh, that is so not what vulnerability is about. It's not about being overly emotional. In fact, we want to have boundaries around our vulnerability. It's okay to show emotion. It's okay to, to cry um, as you're being seen in your authentic way. Um, that happens for me in a lot of our team meetings when something is impacting me and emotion comes up, I'll let it show. And I don't worry that, oh my gosh, my team thinks I'm weak in this moment because I'm really feeling passionate or I'm really feeling connected. I let that emotion show, but I am not um, 
oversharing. I am not overly emotional in the way that I lead. So I hope that makes sense. But it this um, misconception about vulnerability being overly emotional, I really wanted to nip that in the bud here. So when we take risks, that's when innovation happens. There's no innovation without risk taking and there's no risk taking without practicing vulnerability and the discomfort that comes with that. Trying new things, getting outside of your comfort zone, taking on new projects. One of my favorite one-liners is, if you wait until you're ready, you've waited too long. So don't wait too long to take risks. Embrace the discomfort of vulnerability and try something new. Change things up in your, in your company. Be a melody and disrupt in pursuit of social good, environmental good, the change that you want to see in the world. That's going to come through vulnerability. Okay, so the sec this is the second reason why vulnerability is a strength. It is because then we can lead innovation and we can normalize this for our teams. All right, here's my third reason why vulnerability is a strength, and this one's really present for me right now. The idea of vulnerability is about letting go of control. If control is an armored behavior, then the opposite of that is letting go of control. And gosh, that can be hard when you're in a leadership role. We've been conditioned as leaders to think that having control of all the things all the time is good leadership. And in fact, what I'm learning, practicing, experience in real time is that letting go is the pathway to co-creation. And the world is just too complex right now for us to, as leaders, to have all the answers to be able to figure out a problem or a pathway you know, on our own. Finding complex solutions to big world problems right now requires co-created solutions. It requires multiple brains, multiple perspectives. We all need to be able to contribute to solutions uh, because no one individual, no one brain is gonna be able to figure this out. So as a leader, we need to let go of control and invite in other perspectives. And, and this is real time for me. We're at this amazing critical juncture at Inspired Results Group of transitioning the company from one where the brand was really about me as the founder. I've been pretty much a solopreneur for the last 10 years. And I'm excited to now, you know, I've attracted these amazing coaches into Inspired Results Group, and it's time for the group <laughs> to actually become the brand. So th this is a, an exciting transition that's happening right now behind the scenes, and I've got incredible support around me. and. I have to let go of a lot of things. And that is incredibly uncomfortable. And I said that to the team on Monday. It's like, whew, we are in it. We are in transition. We are in transformation. And for me, it's exciting one minute and it's terrifying the next. So letting go, so it's vulnerable, right? It's risky, it's uncertain. I don't know if this is gonna work out. <laughs> you know, it's like all the things are going on. And I, I'm so thankful for the Dare to Lead learning so that I can acknowledge the discomfort. And rather than letting my discomfort, you know, drive armored behavior around shutting things down, taking control, um, going back to my comfort zone of solopreneurship, no, nope, I'm going to just embrace the vulnerability of this. I'm going to take my hands off the reins, I'm gonna embrace the incredible minds that are around me and invite them in with their perspective and, and we're gonna co-create the future of Inspired Results Group. I, 
I don't, I don't know what the answers are. This one brain cannot figure this out. I need more brains at the table and I, I need more hearts at the table with me. So that's what we're doing in real time right now. We're co-creating the future of Inspired Results Group. And it's incredibly uncomfortable and so darn exciting all at the same time. So this is what happens when we embrace vulnerability as a leadership strength. So you can tell I can riff on this topic for a really long time. So let me just recap before we start to wrap up this live. Why is vulnerability a leadership strength? Because when we lean into it, it builds connection with other human beings and that's how we build trust. One conversation at a time, one interaction at a time, we are building trust and we need to embrace vulnerability if we're going to build trust. Innovation, there's so much talk about, we need to innovate, more innovation in the world, in, the, in our companies and innovation comes from vulnerability. It's uncomfortable to innovate. That's because it's risky and it's uncertain. So we know that vulnerability is at the core, at the root of innovation. So let's, let's embrace vulnerability so that we can lead innovation. We can do business differently. We can make the world a better place. And finally, co-creation. We need all the minds at the table, all the heads and hearts coming together to solve complex problems. And there are plenty of complex problems to solve in the world, in our organizations, in our lives. <laughs> so when we let go of control, we embrace the discomfort of vulnerability, co-creation is possible. So much is possible when we embrace vulnerability. So this is my thinking currently on why vulnerability is a leadership strength. Um, this is, this takes practice, this takes awareness. This is what Dare to Lead is all about. Um, this is why I'm so grateful to be able to offer Dare to Lead. We've got our in-person coming up at the end of April. Uh, people are signing up, it's really exciting to see the amazing um, leaders and humans that are coming together for Dare to Lead in person at Tynamar Resort. Could be that they're coming for the Tynamar experience, all good, we'll give them some brave teaching at the same time. And then of course, and I'm uh, this afternoon, I'm with an online virtual group. So we love sharing Dare to Lead virtually. We love bringing people together in person. So if this is resonating and you, you want to learn more about vulnerability and dig into it with some other incredible human beings, then I really invite you to, to join us on this learning journey. It's been the most transformational learning of my life, I would say, personally and professionally. So thanks for showing up live. Um, next week, I'm gonna be with Adele Fraser, one of our incredible associate coaches. We're gonna rumble around the topic of self-trust. Hugely uh, beneficial, again, to me to understand self-trust. And I've learned a lot from Adele around self-trust. So I'm really excited to have that conversation with her next week. All right, take care, stay vulnerable, stay brave, and we'll see you later.